Hi, I'm Sarah Einstein and I am a memoirist and I have been lucky to lead a memoir workshop at Rockvale. Uh, I'm very sad actually not to have been able to make a trip to Rockvale that I had planned recently and I know that it can be difficult for us to be productive when we don't have those normal supports. So I thought that I would invite you here into my backyard with my yapping dog, I apologize, but nothing I do is going to keep her quiet. Uh, and, and talk to you about some of the things I'm doing to stay writing, even as I know that I'm probably not going to get to finish drafts right now because it's a difficult time and that's infusing what I'm writing. So I'm actually doing three sorts of pre-writing things right now so that I have stuff gathered for when I feel like it's time to start writing again. The first of these is a voice exercise that I do. I know who some of the people I'm going to want to capture in my next essay are. And I'm doing this exercise where I have conversations with them about things where I already know how they feel. So I'm not trying to discover what do I think my mom thinks about this or what do I imagine my dad thought about this thing. Rather things where I already know those answers, but I just want to make sure I'm capturing the way they would say it. Sometimes I do this on the page. Often I do it just sitting in my living room or in my writing space. And when I do it that way, um, I sometimes use a voice recorder so that I can check my own veracity later, but not always. Sometimes I'm just talking to myself <laughs> in two voices. Um, so I do this though because everybody speaks in a different way and everybody has idiosyncrasies into the way they talk. So for instance, if you tell my mother that you're going to do something and she thinks it's really stupid, she's not going to say, well, that's really stupid. She will say, well, there's an idea, and you're supposed to know that, that buried in that phrase is, is the implied word terrible before idea. Uh, whereas if you had told my father you were going to do something that he thought was stupid, he would say, that is so damn dumb. Or if it was a political or social idea that he disagreed with that I would say, he would say, that's an idea so stupid, only an intellectual could believe it. Right? And so I, I want to be able to capture their voices and the uniqueness of their voices. And having these sort of mini conversations with them helps me, when I come to the page, be ready to make sure that I'm not just capturing what they would have said, but also how they said it when I'm trying to recreate dialogue from earlier events. Another thing that I'm working on right now is capturing setting. And that's mostly because it gets really tiresome sitting in my house or even out here in my garden and not getting to go places. So I'm spending about 15 minutes a day thinking about the important places in my next work and writing really thick description of, of the setting of one event or another, much more description than I think will ever go into the memoir. But it's giving me everything I'll need when I get to those places. And it's also helping me pick out patterns, right? A thing that you want is you want recurring patterns, even if they're not really symbolic. So a thing I've noticed, because the essay that I'm writing is about my home in West Virginia, is that the color green recurs, both when I'm talking about nature and furniture. And now I'm gonna look for other green things when I'm writing this thick description, just so there's this sort of current which helps readers make these connections to threads that might seem disparate. The last thing that I'm doing that I think is maybe the most useful thing, I'm not, I'm not somebody who journals. I actually feel like for memoirs, there's some danger in journaling because memoir is about the patina of memory over what happened. And you can lose that patina if you have captured too carefully how you fell in the moment as soon or, or very close to as soon as things have happened. But what's happening now is really unusual and frankly, pretty upsetting. And so I'm keeping a daily journal where I don't write, I'm not writing about how I feel about things. That is something I still want memory to, to tell me. But I'm writing about what happened and I'm writing some really small things. Like I'm writing what we're eating. I'm writing if we ventured out and if we did what we ventured out to do and, and whether or not people were obeying the social distancing rules. I'm writing about what's happening in the news. I'm writing about the evolution of the orders from our, our mayor, our governor, and our president. And I'm really just trying to make sure that I can recreate a timeline if it ever comes time to write about this period. 
So I hope that's useful to you. Thank you for letting me visit with you in my garden for a little bit. And I really hope to see you at Rockvale soon.